You know, space is vast, dark, and scary. And the scariest thing about it is how little we really understand about the whole thing. Things that can be taken as granted from a physics standpoint down here on Earth are as nothing in the face of the quantum reality of the big black vacuum. But how crazy is it out there? Here are 10 universe theories that will keep you up at night. Our entire universe, such as we understand it, is a product of the Big Bang, an event that sparked the possible creation and absolute distribution of all matter in our reality. But the real question is, what was there before this happened? One theory suggests that before the Big Bang, there was simply a gravitational singularity, which is a location in space-time where the gravitational field of a body in space becomes exponential to the point of infinity. In simple terms, an incredibly dense, infinitesimally tiny black hole. This singularity is thought to have contained all the matter, energy, space, and time that is now the universe, but compacted down to one billionth of a pinhead, or even smaller. The theory suggests that quantum fluctuations caused irreparable stress to the object, and thus did it explode and rapidly expand, creating what we now call the universe. Black holes remain one of the most terrifying astronomical events of which we can conceive. You might think you understand what a black hole is, but here is a definition. A black hole is a place in space-time where the gravity has become so massive that nothing can escape. Not light, not sound, not matter, not even time. They are effectively invisible too, unless they are consuming something else. In which case, all you would see is that thing swirling around the black hole's event horizon, its outer perimeter. Inside the black hole, there is a point so small you can't imagine it. One of the pixels on your screen is, to a singularity, like the size of Earth compared to you. The intensity of this singularity and its consumption bends space-time and breaks what we call the laws of conventional physics. Some have said that black holes could transport you to some other region of space-time, but the reality is far more chilling. In short, the gravity on your body would stretch you in some ways and crush you in others as you were pulled in towards the singularity. As you got further in, your body would be warped beyond all recognition in a process that is known as spaghettification. In short, a grisly death. Earth and its neighbor Venus are quite similar as planets go. They're similar in size, composition, and mass, with the only difference being that while Earth supports life, Venus is mostly a volcanic desert of carbon dioxide. You're probably thinking this is going to be about climate change, right? Well, actually, no, because the waves of alternate climates that have affected the Earth are probably never going to be enough to ruin its surface. However, in about a billion years from now, the Sun will become 10% hotter, making the surface temperature of the Earth almost 50 degrees Celsius. This means that the oceans will slowly boil away and transform Earth into a big greenhouse, just like Venus. The atmosphere would become comprised of almost entirely carbon dioxide, and the atmospheric pressure would multiply 90-fold, making it totally impossible to breathe. And even if you could somehow breathe it, you would have to basically swim through the air in order to move. The clouds would become sulfuric acid, and that means you'd probably be long dead anyway. Not just part of British sci-fi comedy series Red Dwarf, a white hole is actually a real thing. You can probably figure out what it is, but there's a little nuance to it. In essence, it is the opposite of a black hole, spewing matter, light, and time back into the universe. They're called white holes, but they in fact look more or less the same as black holes, but with one key difference. They are going in reverse. Watch some footage of a black hole, then play it backwards, and you'll see what a white hole is. They're altogether much more friendly sounding than black holes, until you realize that your corpse would be some of the atoms being spewed out. Enrico Fermi's paradox demonstrates a contradiction between the consideration of our own technical skill and the probability of alien life on other planets, and the fact that to anybody's knowledge, we have never actually encountered any sign of it. The Fermi paradox calls into question our assumptions about the ease of life being possible, since it happened to us, so it surely happened elsewhere. Either there is no other life out there and we are significant in some accidental way, or there is a vast space graveyard out there somewhere with all the life forms that didn't make it listed. Either way, it's pretty bleak. The Drake Equation is an attempt to answer the question of how many extraterrestrial civilizations there could be in the Milky Way and beyond. It all started as a way of answering the question the Fermi Paradox put out, of why we hadn't encountered any aliens since we have the ability to launch probes and visit our own moon. 
where n is the number of civilizations with detectable electronic emissions. R is the rate of formation of stars that could allow life to exist. Fp, the number of those stars with planetary systems. Ne, the number of planets in a system that could sustain life. Fl, the fraction of those planets that actually have life. Fi, the fraction of that life that is intelligent. Fc, the fraction of those intelligent life forms that form civilization with enough technological understanding to emit signals into space. And lastly, L, the length of time that those civilizations exist to produce signals. Unfortunately, this is mostly based on the opinions of the scientists using it, so we're really not any closer to understanding. Nothing lasts forever, as Guns N' Roses once wrote, and there are lots of theories about what will be the ultimate fate of our universe, but one of the more interesting ones is the Big Rip. Scientists have theorized that since we know the universe is still very slowly expanding, there's every chance that one day, not tomorrow, don't worry, the universe will expand so much that it will literally become to come apart at the seams. Planets, solar systems, nebulae, and galaxies will dissolve into their constituent matter as the universe tears itself apart, atom by atom, to become a pile of atomic dust so vast that even Thanos' body can't compare. Fortunately, we are never going to see that happen. Some scientists believe that the way we see stars, based on the relative speed of light and the distance in light years of certain stars from our humble little planet, that we are actually seeing things as they were in the past. This means that by the time we see a star, if the star is suitably far away from us, that we aren't looking at it in any approximation of its current state. The star could already be dead and have exploded, and by the time we realize it, it actually happened thousands of years ago. Here's an interesting thing. The first broadcast ever created on this planet that was strong enough to make it through our atmosphere and into space was Adolf Hitler's opening speech at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. That means that if any aliens ever receive it, they will assume it is 1936 and we are German. Hopefully they stop listening and don't see what happened in the next few years, not just because it would be embarrassing when they land and ask us what the heck is wrong with us, but because they're probably also going to be able to get our pop music too and no one wants Cardi B representing the planet. It's a bit of a cliched concept at this point, but the simulation hypothesis suggests that all life on Earth and all matter in the universe could in fact turn out to be a computer simulation. Neil deGrasse Tyson actually discussed this matter, saying that it's about 50-50 whether our entire reality is in fact just someone else running a simulation. The fact that chimpanzees and humans are so biologically similar and yet so different when it comes to intelligence is a major factor in this hypothesis, as is the fact that the more we learn about the universe, the more it behaves like a computer simulation. But which came first, the simulation or the universe? That's the list. But what do you think about these theories? After tapping that like button and making sure you're subscribed, click on part two of this Space Infinity series for more theories on the horrors of the universe.